This is the Earth particle cloud that I built in Danib. As I mentioned already, there are lots of limitations with app source version of Danib because you cannot bring over external so sources. And therefore, you cannot use custom maps. However, you still can do something, which I did here. And it's actually to the extent, albeit limited, uh, interactive. You can turn, you can change page, you can roll. Let's first look into the data. It's quite simple. It's a data set I found somewhere in the internet with the data about airports across the world. What I need here or what I will be using here is name, city, uh, country, ETA, code. Most important ones is latitude and long longitude and some other fields. So this is the data set. It's simple CSV. So not the point of this video. Now let's dive into this pack itself. Let me start with auto size. So basically, I actually wanted it to fit in automatically, but because I'm using uh, those sliders and those sliders are native to uh, Vega Light, for some reason, when I set automatic, it doesn't take into account those sliders. And because of that, the whole visuals have scroll bars and it doesn't fit the canvas. So it only takes into account the particle cloud itself. Because of that, I had to go other way. I had to specify a fit x-axis, uh, yet I'm specifying height manually to be able to see those sliders on screen as well. Okay, so next thing, you have to specify projection. Uh, because I want to see it rounded, Earth-like, treaty-like, I specify orthographic. There are actually many different projections that you can use. Most of them are 2D-like on a 2D canvas. Orthographic is the only, I think, is the only one which is rounded. So that's what I'm using. And besides that, Vigalite also allows you to play with three parameters. Your pitch and roll. That's why you can turn it that way, that way, that way. Here I'm specifying that I do want to rotate it. And here is the expression. And this expression is linked to three parameters and sliders that I will specify later. Those are their names. And then three parameters follow. Here I'm specifying that default value is zero. I'm binding it to those sliders. And I'm saying, okay, the range for those sliders is minus 90, 290, and the step is one. Quite similar to when you create numbered inputs in uh, field parameters in Pro BI. So, and I have three of those, as you can see here. <clears throat> Let's move on. And there is only one? Yeah, there is only one layer in this visual, which is circle, because we are projecting particle cloud on a 2D flat uh, canvas, circled canvas. So there is just one layer and it's circle. And then I'm mapping longitude and latitude to relevant fields within my data set, which came directly from the data set. Color, uh, here I actually have condition Reason being is that I've also implemented selection. Okay, so as you can see here, I selected airport, it displays on the right, and this is what those conditions are for. Let me switch back to the spec so we see <clears throat> what those conditions do. So first one is for the color. When I select some um, <clears throat> uh, some point in the particle cloud, it 
uses different color, this shade of blue, as you can see here. And again, go to settings and make sure to enable uh, cross highlight for values in dataset rows, because this is what is used here, selected um, column in the data set. And when it's on, color changes. Otherwise, it's still blue color, which you can see here for all other points. Color and size. As you can see, it's a bit bigger than others when it's selected. And therefore, again, I'm specifying that size changes to different value whenever it's selected. And I'm also specifying three fields that I want to be exposed in the tooltip when I hover over some uh, points. It's airport name, city, country. Okay. It's that easy with regards to the NIP spec. Besides that, you can see here that I have, uh, let's say, info bar, sidebar with information about selected airport. <clears throat> For this, I had to create some uh, measures, extra measures. Reason being is that uh, I only wanted to display something when I select one airport. If I don't select anything or select multiple, I don't want it to be visible. And therefore, all of my measures are done in this fashion. If <clears throat> airport name has just one value, then show me that value. Otherwise, show multiple airports. And this pattern repeats in all other measures, with the exception that instead of multiple airports, I'm just displaying the dash. And that's how you get to this uh, visualization particle cloud. While it's quite limited to what you can do, I think it's still eye-catching. And that's all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next one.